This episode of The Static Traveller is brought to you by Holiday Travel Fantasies. Now, we're all here because we love travelling. And once this lockdown is over and done with, you're going to want to get the best deal that you can to get out and about and back travelling all over the world. Now, you might be saying to yourself, where can I get the best deal? I'll tell you where. Holiday Travel Fantasies. A fully qualified and regulated travel agent, working for a renowned and fully protected ABDA member with over 25 year experience in the travel industry. Now, whether your next holiday is a honeymoon, family break, weekend break, it's a cruise, whether you're just looking for hotels, flights, car hire or excursion, they really do it all. Now, they partner with major suppliers to make it more easier for you to work out the best package that suits your needs and your budget. And you should contact them at www www.voltrudebonzu.inteltravel.uk forward slash booktravel.cfm The link is in the description or you can also email them at travelfantasies473 at yahoo.com Holiday Travel Fantasies where they do really look forward to getting the best deal for you. Now that's done, let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to The Static Traveller with me, James. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Static Traveller, the podcast where I speak to travellers of the past and the present from around the globe and let them tell you in their own words about their adventures throughout this amazing world. Now, today's guest is traveller and fellow podcaster, Luciana Colmenares. I hope I've got that correct. Um, But (laughs) Lou is originally from Venezuela, uh, but she has now moved and she's currently on lockdown living in Chicago. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Hi, so how are you today? I'm good, thank you. And thank you so much. That was uh, a great intro. So yeah, I am from Venezuela and I um, I moved to the States uh, six years ago. So what made you move from Venezuela to, to America? Uh, well, I don't know if you uh, or anyone listening to this have been aware of the news that everything that is going on in my country political and economical situation so that's pretty much it uh, I love my country um, but yeah you know it's like I needed to uh, move to a place that will provide me more opportunities so I decided to come to America <laughs> <laughs> well, and the dreams <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um, why America why, why not you know Australia New Zealand um, you know, why, why not South America, another part of South America? Right. So first I came here. So the way I came here was singing a single pair, which is, um, I don't know if you know it, but it is a program that you, you come here and work as a nanny and then you're responsible for an American family. So, yeah. you know, the pro, like being a sponsor by an American family was like, the way to go for me because it's like I am from a very small town and it's not like my family have had the money or even myself to you know go on my own or it's like it's not like like for example how many Europeans I have seen they do um or even America it's like I work for the summer and then with that I can pay you know my travels so I needed I needed a program to sponsor me so in Venezuela the only one available was to the states um not to any other continent so that's why i decided to to come to to come here because that was the only program i found and it worked out perfectly so yeah good Mm -hmm. that's really good um so in terms of your you know your traveling um Mm -hmm. you left venezuela and what what kind of happened from there so once you left venezuela what was the the first step for you okay so yeah, I li- <clears throat> I'm sorry. I left uh, Venezuela and then um, so I left Venezuela and then I stayed here for a year. And my plan goes to go was to go back, uh, finish university because I had like one semester left and 
I'm the inner ships, but then I couldn't go back and my parents were like, hey, um, you shouldn't come back, like find something else to do. So I was like, oh, okay. So I was moving to Argentina, but then it's like, I, like, I don't know, everything aligned for me to stay here. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to take on this opportunity and, and just stay. And I, it had worked out perfectly. And uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So what were, what were, so, uh, what were you studying at, at university? Mm, so be, before moving here, I was studying tourism because okay. um like anything related to traveling and you know connecting with other people is something that i am really passionate about so i was studying tourism and you know my passion for traveling just started uh since i was very young and you know since i was in, in my country so i was like oh maybe you know tourism i can just uh work in different continents and you know i will always have um work in different places so it's like um i had the um the idea that i was like oh i just with this profession i can just move anywhere okay um right so i'm gonna normally i would i would do a couple of things and we'd have a bit of a chat but i'm going to kind of mix up this time um the podcast because I'm, I'm trying something a bit newer uh, sure, a bit, yeah. a bit, a bit different. Um, so I'm going to change the format a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. What we're going to do is I'm just going to go over a couple of icebreaker questions with you. All right, just so everyone knows a little bit more about you, um, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty stuff. Um, Perfect. So when you're traveling, all right, what what must you have with you when you're traveling? Okay, that's a great question. Um... Well, definitely my phone, that my phone with internet, uh, <laughs> because I have been in countries where no one speaks the languages I speak. So it's like, okay, I, I need, like the translator is extremely useful. Yeah. And then second, it will be, um, it will be definitely my card, like my, my credit card or my debit card. <laughs> Those two. <laughs> I don't I don't, I don't know if you were expecting this very deep answer of like yeah I need to travel with this my journal my book but no, like <laughs> it's very practical like my phone and my car like I just need money and internet that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we know you're from Venezuela, all right? Mm-hmm. But what is your what's your hometown? Oh okay, so my hometown is called it's called Barinas. So no one knows about it. It's, it's, it's a small town in the countryside, um, which is really cool. Like I love being from the countryside and, you know, it's just kind of like puts everything into perspective, like being from this very small town and then getting out of there and then traveling around and like, you know, visiting many different continents. But, you know, being from there, it's like, you know, just to get an idea, just so you get an idea how small it is, it's like, we got our first McDonald's when I was 14 and it's still, <laughs> <laughs> and it's still like people, there are pictures. I haven't seen it myself, but I have seen the pictures like, um, like people going to McDonald's in, in horses, you know, you know, the automac, <laughs> like they go in go, horses. <laughs> go down the drive through in the horses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's how small it is. <laughs> So, can you tell us somewhere that you want to travel but you haven't yet? Oh uh, no, I I have I have been um, already. I have been to twenty two countries in three. Yeah, days. but so but somewhere that you you haven't been yet that you want to go. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, no, definitely Africa. I am like obsessed with Africa, but I I just haven't. I haven't, like, you know, I hear, I don't know if you have been to Africa, but I just always hear many different um, things about it, like, oh, like, because I always travel alone, um, Mm -hmm. so it's like, oh, no, like, it's not safe for women to go there, Uh, you should go with a guy, or you should go in a group, so definitely Africa is on the top of my list, especially Tanzania, I want to climb the Kilimanjaro, 
um but i just just to just i don't know i i just haven't got the guts to go there on my own <laughs> or like or, and i haven't found someone to go with me and uh what's your your favorite country my favorite country that, that's a tough question to, uh, <laughs> um because you know every country has uh his special thing but i would say i mean i would say definitely like uh Vietnam has a special place in my heart because because it was so different. It was so mm. different in so many aspects, and no one like most of the places I went to, no one spoke uh, English. So it was kind of like I had to communicate through signs. I had to learn how to ride scooters, uh, which I suck at it. I was like going like I don't know two miles per hour. But like, uh, you know, like it was a country that that pushed me out of my comfort zone in so many ways. Um, mm. So I would say that, yeah, Vietnam. You know, it's it's funny you say that because a lot of people that I speak to that you know about their you know their favorite locations and their favorite place to go, it's always it's always Asia, it's always Thailand, it's always Vietnam. You know, it's always it's never you know like. Uh, france or italy mm -hmm. or you know it's always asia yeah you know i believe that is because it's, it's different it's just different like for example for all for westerns like we're all western so it's like you know for example france or many other parts of europe it's like we're used to it um yeah. actually, actually when i was in paris uh, i met a friend and we were just talking like we, we've been exposed to like these all these images of france and paris from like even from kids it's like from where i grew up like in my kitchen there was always like a picture of paris <laughs> you know so it's like <laughs> something that you either because of the media um or because someone just traveled there is something you know about it but then asia is kind of like unique it's like you feel like only the most adventurous go there so i guess mm. in my opinion i guess that's why it kind of makes like more impact um but but i'm not saying like like some like uh countries in europe are are really cool and it's like each country has um its own um charm like for example to me many other travelers like for example europeans love colombia um and mm -hmm. many other love my country uh which i don't recommend anyone to travel that just now wait a few years but like for example to me <laughs> It's like Colombia is is like I like it's nothing special because it's like I'm I, I was so exposed to it, you know. Yeah. So whereas Asia is like, uh yeah, like cool. Like I, I never knew anything about it until I bought it until I came here. <laughs> so Yeah. Uh, and it's just that you know, that complete different way and it's all like the different food and things like that as well. Um it, you know, it's just a complete different way of life compared to, as you say, Western civilization. Or oh my not God! Civilization, but um, you know, no, the Western world. No, definitely. Oh my God! It's it's a whole change of paradigm because even like they eat things that aren't aren't socially accepted for us to eat here. So that's also that is like, I mean, I I ate things that. I'm like, I probably, I will have never eat here. And yeah. even when I shared the stories about the strange things I ate, eat over there, people are like, what? Did you do that? I'm like, yeah, but it's like, it's completely normal over there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like cockroaches and things like that. And yeah. <laughs> like I ate crickets. A and... Crickets yeah. and things like that. No, I, I, I think it's one of the things you would need to try when you're there. But if somebody came up to me in Scotland and said, "Look, I've got a stick with some crickets on it. Do you want to eat it?" and I'd be like, "No, get that out of my face." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, okay, do, okay. Sorry, did you say like if someone offered that to you in Scotland? Ah, uh -huh, I would, I would tell them to get it out of my face. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> But if I was in Asia, if I was in like, so for example, Thailand, I would be like, yeah, give me it, I'll try it. 
Yeah, exactly. Because it's like it becomes their reality because it's like uh, kind of like everyone does it. So, I mean, it's kind of like, OK, you know, it's an agreement that everyone is to it. So I must do it as well. It's not something <laughs> weird. So it's, yeah. it's like, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something strange like, like that happens or like, and it's their culture. It's like, I am, I am the one visiting. So, I mean, I shouldn't be disrespectful and just eat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how long, how long do you travel at a time? You know, when you, when you go to a location, how long do you tend to spend there? So, um, okay. Well, I am, most of my friends say that I am like a, I guess you would say a fast traveler. Like, I I tend to go somewhere, do everything that I want to do, and then I just move on to the next thing. And I am I am like that with everything in my life. So, um, <laughs> so it's like I can sometimes spend five days to a week in a country. Um, then sometimes I can spend a month in a country. So it depends how I feel. But usually when I travel, I try to, I travel like two times a year mm-hmm. and, and then it's like maybe one month, two months at a time. And it also, it depends on how much flexibility I have in my current job. Um, so, so yeah, but like, for example, another one of my favorite countries was the Philippines, amazing country, highly recommend that if you haven't been there. Um, and then it's like I was there only for a week because I just knew what I wanted to do. And I was like, I went with a goal in mind. I'm like, I just want to go here, do this, 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 and that. I did it. And then I flew to Indonesia. So it's like, kind of like depends for how I feel, what I want to do and what the country has to offer. So how do you pick what, what you want to do? You know, how much research do you do into the country you're going to? Okay, so... I don't really, um, I don't really do much research, uh, much research. Um, um, what I do is like, I pretty much follow what people recommend me. Um, like for example, for, with the Philippines, Philippines example, when I was in Mexico, I met another traveler and I was telling him that I was going to Southeast Asia after, and he was like, oh no, okay. Like if, if Philippines, Philippines is not on your list you must go and you got to do this expedition that is for a week it is around palawan and and then you get to spend i mean you get to to visit places that you wouldn't wouldn't go otherwise and then you spend time with a native because it's like this company that i was doing the expedition with with has like a mic like created like a micro economy for the natives in the islands which I, i i thought it was pretty cool so like for that my research was just a recommendation i just signed up for the for the expedition and that's it um for the other ones um i i usually go by recommendation and then i just my research is probably an hour i'm like okay uh i'm gonna go here here and that i don't like to research too much either because i kind of feel that it takes the the excitement away sometimes i'm just like okay now that i have to go here and I'm just gonna see what I I will find there, yeah. but that that's just me. <laughs> I don't recommend it. If you like to do research, <laughs> do your research. <laughs> and you know, we'll, we'll come to it in a, in a couple of minutes. But I know you know you've got you've got a podcast as well. It's all female traveler podcast. Um, so when it comes to traveling, do you? I know you were talking about you know you were talking to other travelers there, and you were you know taking recommendations of other people. Do you prefer traveling by yourself or, or do you like, do you meet up with friends or do you meet up with people and then do some ex, you know experiences with them or do you like just doing it by yourself? My personal preference is um, by myself. Um, I mean, I'm open to travel with friends. I have done it. Um, but it's just like I, I, I really like to have that freedom to just do what I want in the sense that, as I said, like, I mean, like the amount of time I spend in a country depends on how I feel and if I did everything that I wanted. And like sometimes it's like, you know, I want to stay longer or for a sure amount of time. So it's like, I don't have to have, I don't like to have kind of like 
that constraint that oh my god I need to um I need to do what everyone wants and this and that yeah. so and then also like in my in my own personal experience like my friends I am in my in my inner circle I am the only one that is like this I am considered the hippie of the group <laughs> <laughs> because I like to travel so it's like actually like when i when when i meet up with my friends and they want to travel they kind of like want to go to you know the more they want they like to have the more fancy experiences and they don't like to travel like i and I stay at hostels or like you know do like the yeah. more adventurous things so that's that i mean just because of that i like to uh travel on my own but oh, i always meet other people that is kind of like in the same synergy and like wants to you know uh, instead of hostels and hitchhikes, so even though yeah, so I travel was, on my own, uh -huh. that was the next question there. So, like, where, where do you stay when you're traveling? Do you like so you're saying a lot of hostels? Um, do you ever do any like camping or anything like under the stars, or is it just you know hostels? Or... Yeah, so I, when I was younger, I am 28 now, so <laughs> when I was younger, it was. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but I would just sleep anywhere. Like, if I was at an island, I would sleep on the sand. <laughs> and, like, and I would sleep, like, just on a bench. Like, I just didn't care. But now that I'm older, like, I'm almost 30 now, and then the old, I, I believe that the older you get, the more you appreciate comfort. So <laughs> that is why, you know, I start transitioning to hostels and... You know, when I was in Asia, in Southeast Asia, there were times where I would stay at a hostel with 25 other people in the room. Uh, mm. But then it's like, you know, in countries like Vietnam, I was like, well, this is so cheap that I, I think I'm just going to get a, a room for myself. Um, and now, like, I haven't traveled this year for obvious reasons. Um, mm. But um, I believe that if I travel again, I kind of would like, you know, more privacy now. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, but you know, it, it is it's, ch it's changing. I I I kind of, as I said, I believe that I feel that the older I get, like the more I appreciate comfort and privacy. But yeah, yeah before I just do didn't you, care. Uh -huh. Do you think you'll you'll stop traveling at all, or you know, what's what's the plans for the future for you? I mean, for this year, with everything that is going on, I don't think I'm gonna travel. Um, I'm just going to wait for everything to settle down. Um, yeah, so for this year, no. But then, um, I mean, I have plans to... So one of my goals is to also, my, my personal goals that are related to traveling is to learn two more languages. So far, I speak English and Spanish. And like, I, I really want to speak Portuguese and French. So definitely, like Brazil is a country that I see in my in my near future, and I want to go there for at least four months. First, because it's such a huge country; it's almost a continent in, in itself. And second, because yeah, I really, I I really want to speak Portuguese. Like I I I feel like I don't know if you have heard it, but it sounds so beautiful to me. Um. So definitely, well, what you should do, what you should do then is. Uh... One of my previous guests, I think he was episode four, uh, okay. Lingo, Lingo Louie, look him up. He is, I can't remember the term for it, but he can speak like 12, 13, 14 languages. Um, so if you if you look him up, I'm sure he'll give you tips on, you know, learning Portuguese. Oh. But, um, he is, it's going to annoy me what the word is for that. Um but he, you know, that's that's his niche. That's his thing. You know, he's he's right now he's learning uh, two languages at the same time. So he's um, wow. Yeah, so he, he is. It's quite impressive. He, he does like daily posts. So shout out to Louis. I know you'll be listening. Um, but uh, yeah, you should hit him up. He's no, definitely, he's I will. <laughs> that is very um, impressive. <laughs> Yeah, it must take a, a lot. I mean, I've been trying to learn Spanish for about five years, and so far I've got the uh, what is it? Hola. Oh, no, no, no. I can help uh, you. No. I can help you with your right, Spanish. Okay. I've got uh, hola. Uh, ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿y tú? 
and I can say like little things like useless <laughs> words like uh, like agua and uh, um, what well, like agua mechanical. Is... <laughs> okay, that's very useless. <laughs> yeah, but like agua is water. Like, come on, if you're thirsty, you need to know how to ask for water. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I need to step up. I can do colours. I can do. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I can count to three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's um, a start. That's a start. Yeah, it's definitely a start. I need to. I need to step up the training a bit. Um, Louis's been pestering me to to go and do some uh, some groups and things like that. So I maybe need to take him up on that. Okay. Um. So anyway, back to the back to back to you. Um, <laughs> so tell us about you know somewhere that you visited that you didn't like. That I didn't like. Okay. Yeah. So um, okay, I I will say like I didn't like Czech Republic at all. Um, it's a uh, especially Prague. Um, uh, it's a beautiful city. But for some reason, I just didn't get a, I just didn't, I just don't understand their culture. And I got like, I got like some weird encounters over there. Like, you know, like, I don't know, people weren't as nice. Maybe it was only to me because I have met other people that are like, oh my God, like, Czech Republic is an amazing country. It is an amazing country, but I don't know. It's like. The interactions that I had with the with the people there weren't weren't good. Like I don't know, and um, I, I I think that I was too. You know, I am I am an extrovert, and I'm always like very excited, and like I am I am loud. I, I need to admit it. So it's like people are there, like in my experience are like more quiet, and like you know. Um, so I don't know, like, and I I, I was learning some Czech. So I will like try to go to the supermarket and like say the few words and you in check. So people were like, I can't speak English. So I stopped trying. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> I didn't mean to find you. And then, you know, like stuff like the restaurants and I will be like, hey, like, you know, that I, I kind of like, I guess I got used to the American way that if you go to a restaurant it's like the server is like oh my god like what can i do for you how can i help you and it's just like yeah. this, all this excitement that probably is not real but then it's like i went to like in Prague, and it's like oh like you know i want this and they were like okay it's like i don't know yeah. and then i was teaching english too so it was sometimes really hard to you know be in the classroom teaching and smiling and then everyone really really serious and you know and then i i don't know it's just See, like so many that, things <laughs> that's one thing i didn't enjoy about america you know when we went mm -hmm. um you know i don't know if it's just again what, what we're used to here but you know when we were sitting having a meal you know maybe four or five times they would come over and they're like oh yeah how are you getting on like yeah do you need anything and that kind of thing and you're just like no i just want to eat my dinner <laughs> um, <laughs> and don't get me wrong it's, it's good that you're you know they're being attentive and yeah you know, they're coming over checking but you know for me it was it was just that bit too much yeah um, no I, I i totally i totally get it um yeah it's like sometimes it's like it's too much excitement but i get it they're working for their tips because here yeah. here is mandatory to tip i know in, in, in europe it's like you don't have to tip if you don't want to but like in here like they like to work hard for their tips and they they showed like that extra excitement <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's, it's interesting so this is one question I love asking people. So your most memorable moment, your most amazing moment, so like, or or a breathtaking moment. Okay. Um. Well, definitely. Okay. So definitely. Let's go back to Vietnam. Um. It's just like, for example, with Vietnam. When I was twelve, I saw. You know those images, those <clears throat> screensavers that your computer has that like with uh, yeah. the landscapes and stuff. You know, back mm -hmm. in the 90s, I saw a picture of uh, I saw a picture of Halong Bay in Vietnam, and I was like, wow, like I really, I really want to go to this place. 
But you know, in my mind, it's like you know, being from such a small town, it's like where, where, where like when am I gonna go there? You know, I saw it as a something so far away that I was I, I probably I will never go there. So, anyway, so you know, when I when I went to Vietnam, I started uh, traveling from south to north, and then Halong Bay, Halong Bay is in the north. So I don't know when I was there. And then when we took the boat to go to the bay, I was just like, oh my God, I, I can't believe I, I'm here. Like, I, I just can't believe it. And then I was just like asking another, another traveler like to just take a bunch of pictures of me because I just couldn't believe it. I'm not like a picture person, like taking selfies all the time. But in this yeah. case, I was just like, I just need every single picture I can from this moment. And then once you're on the boat, like they give you the, the option to to jump off the boat and then like swim to a, a beach that is nearby and then to kayak. So I was like, for example, I was the, the first one to jump off the boat because it was in winter. So everyone was like, oh, I don't know. It's too cold. I was like, no, I want to jump. <laughs> like, I can't believe I can't believe I'm here. Like. I don't know. It was just like, it, it, it's just that realization that, oh my God, like I never thought I, I, I would be able to come here and now I am. And it's just like yeah. that, that deep state of gratitude. Like, oh my God, thank you life and universe for bringing, bringing me over here. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that will be the moment. And you know, many others, but that will be like the first one I have on top of um, right now that I'm thinking of right now. Okay, so let's talk a bit about your podcast. Mm -hmm. So you are a fellow podcaster, and you have got the podcast, uh, the Soul Female Traveler. Um, yeah. Talk to us a bit about that. So you know what what made you start a podcast? Okay, so first that podcast I started it as a experiment. Um, I wanted to do something, you know, like something else, and I wanted to do it. Um, in a bilingual format um so i was like yeah so okay. you, you do it in spanish and english don't you yeah so yeah i was like okay I, it was also a way to get out of my comfort zone with regards of my english and but you know it was <laughs> there is also a learning curve to everything if you if you listen to my first episodes are very like the quality of the sound and everything is really bad um but um but yeah, so I did it uh, because mostly I, so my, my target are like solo female travelers or, or um, like women that want to travel, but just, just don't have gotten to it because yeah. I have many reasons. Like the main reason I speak to is, you know, because they're scared because they don't know what is out there. And, and also I decided to do it in Spanish because it's not common among Latin women to to travel the world it's always like i don't know it's like i don't know we have this belief um and of course this is a generalization like i believe that we have um this idea that the war is a dangerous place and what i wanted to show with the podcast is that the war might be might be a dangerous place but if you take if you're if you take the necessary precautions it doesn't have to be a dangerous place for you and like, for example, yeah. in, some, in some of the episodes, I talk about that, like, hey, like, you know, if you are a woman and you're traveling alone, you shouldn't be walking alone at night. You shouldn't go out on your own to a bar to get drunk. Like, you know, like those um, tips that are just pure common sense that is like that you have to stay protected. It's like, like, um, and then like, for example, always be alert. Like. I always recommend women not to wear their headphones when they're traveling because you, you need to be 100% alert all the time because you don't know if someone might come from behind, from, um, you know, from any other way. And then also like have in mind, like, what are the exits? Like, where, 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 yeah, where, like, if I am in a certain room, where is the exit, the exit that I can escape and this and that. So, um, I try to talk about all that and, and then also share my experience or like interview other women that have been in, in traveling or living in other countries about like hey like this is why we ex what we experienced and i mean i didn't it's pretty safe like for example one of the 
um, misconceptions we get about Asia is like um, since their economies are not as the ones in the West, like people are like, oh no, like it's very unsafe because yeah. um, their economies are like this and that. And then it's like once you go there, you cannot realize that probably their economies are not as strong because they are more attached to their culture and their religion than to their economy and working. So, um, and then like many countries in Southeast Asia, in my opinion, are very, very safe. But again, like always taking your precautions. Um, so yeah, so you just start as an, idea just to share that and it's also um because i i always get the you know the the opinions or 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 the comments like oh my god you're so brave because you travel on your own and it's like yeah you're cool too (laughs) just (laughs) you can do it just follow certain guidelines and you'll be fine and then you won't regret it um and I, i i also get it like it, and it all depends, I also mentioned in one of my episodes that it all depends what you focus your energy on in the sense mm-hmm. that if you're just only watching news about the people that, you know, have died while traveling and this and that, that's probably what you're attracting because it's what you're feeding your mind to. But then if you're yeah. focusing on the positive, I mean, I'm not going to say that, oh, just because you don't think about it, it's not going to happen. But I believe that if you think that it's it's going to go like everything is going to go well you're going to be safe um like chances are less that something bad is going to happen to you yeah i mean i've had a couple of i've had a female guest in the past um who's a solo traveler as well uh, angela she's from india Mm -hmm. um and she travels solely in india uh, and once she's been, you know, around in there, she's hoping to branch out into, you know, the rest, the rest of the world. Wow. Um, so she, you know, I asked her, the, you know, the same kind of questions about, you know, the stigmas around, you know, solo female traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you never know, she could be a good guest for you on, on your podcast. Um, yeah. But um, you know, do you, do you not feel that though it's slightly unfair that you know, just because you're female, you then have to, you know, take all this extra consideration and think yeah. about all these kind of things. Um, you know, have you been in any countries where you feel like they're taking steps to, you know, dilute that, to stop that, you know, to stop you having to feel like that? Um, sorry, can you, if I have been to any country where they have taken a step to what? Yeah, so do you, have you been to any countries where you feel like, you know, they're taking steps to prevent you feeling like that, to stop you feeling like, you know, you, you need to be looking over your shoulder, that, you you know, when you're sitting in a room, you need to have mm-hmm. an escape plan kind of thing, you know, have you seen any countries actively working to to, to stop that? Um, no. <laughs> um, no, not really. I suppose it's, you know, it's, it's quite disappointing from the fact that, you know, if you're travelling, whether you're male or female, you should be able to experience the same things, you know. Uh, no, th- I mean, definitely not. I totally agree with you. Um, yeah. Um, but, I mean, I also, I, I, I kind of like, I understand, but I also, we, we have come from, you know, we're, we're kind of like a steer, um, condition to what our um, previous generations did somehow. So it's like getting, you know, changing that way of thinking is going to take time and education. Yeah. So it's like in the meantime, it is what it is. And I can only, you know, be responsible for what I do for myself. Yeah. And I mean, the only way it's going to change is, you know, with people like you out traveling, you know, breaking the stigma. And that's not me saying, you know, that, that you know, all these countries are, are still like that today. You know, I, I asked Angela the same question, you know, how she was, you know, because you hear a lot of stigma about India and, you know, that it's not safe for female travellers, especially solo female travellers. Um, you know, and she's saying, no, that you know, it's not like that now, which is, which is good to hear. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I'm confused. 
yeah. So what I was what I was saying is that you know it's good that you know as a as a solo female traveller, the only mm-hmm. way that we're going to the only way that, that it's ever going to change is by you know people like yourself, solo mm-hmm. travellers, continuing to to travel, um, continuing yeah. to go to these places to change people's opinions of it um, or of these places. No, definitely, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. Like you know, um, yeah actually yeah like traveling and interacting with those people that might have a different opinion about it and it's it's just hard because um well it's not hard but like for example in my case like everything starts with my family and my parents like they cannot believe that I like to travel alone or that like I like to go to different continents of my own so it's like it just starts with yeah changing that opinion first within your own community (laughs) and then Mm -hmm. And then, like, and then also in your interactions when you're traveling, and and I know, like, in many countries, is at a different degrees. I have been in Muslim countries, so in Muslim countries, so it's like over there is, you know, a whole different stigma that there, are, you know, that you have to work on um, approaching or like giving a new perspective, a perspective about new things. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I've got a question here from you, uh, sure. or for you, sorry, from my little girl. Um, uh, she, I speak to you know, I'll, I speak to her before I come on any podcast, and you know, tell them a, tell her a little bit about the guests I'm going to be speaking to. Um, so what she's asking is, you know, one, do you miss your mum and dad back home, and two, um, how do you stay in touch with them? Okay. Uh, of course I of course I miss them um uh you know like everything it's like you meet you miss the people uh you miss your people uh, and especially like nowadays with everything that is going on and you're like extra worried um I I do miss them but like in my case um the way I like to see it is like I am better off in this country so um even though i miss them i know it's the right is i'm making the right decision by staying here and then second how do i stay in touch with them um i use an app called WhatsApp, and when they have good signal because it's another thing in venezuela like the tele- telecommunications are not that good so when they have signal i video call them it's not if not i just call them and if not we text and that's it um but yeah, I mean, I'm not get homesick that often because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful to, you know, being somewhere else and then being able to, you know, help them out with whatever yeah. they need. When when was the last time you were you were in Venezuela? Two years ago. <laughs> so yeah, my plan was to go this year. Uh, I tried to visit once a year, but you know, I just called in last year and then. Um, I was like, okay, I'm just going to go this year. And then, well, for obvious reasons, I can't. <laughs> well, actually, it's like something, um, like something, I don't, I don't know if you guys experience the same thing, but like, for example, for us in Venezuela, it's like if you live there, it's because, you you know, you make your income is based on the on the country's economy and your, our mm-hmm. inco- incomes are very low. So it's like like for venezuelans it's really hard to travel around the country so because it's expensive and then i mean we have like beautiful places like we have the tallest waterfall in the world it's amazing i can send you pictures later but then it's like yeah, it's, so, it's so expensive for a venezuelan to to travel there so anyway so since i moved here and then when i come back every time i try to go to one of those places i haven't been to to Angel, Angel's Falls, that's the name of the waterfall, yet, because, you know, always something happened and there, is, there aren't any tours available or whatever. But then I have been to, you know, visit the other places and something that was really amazing is that I was, we have these um, indigenous tribe in, in like, in the north, um, north eastern part of the country. So uh-huh. that was like an ama- I, I have this attraction to to like indigenous and the Native Americans, 
Um, so it's like, you know, experiencing that, like they are called river people because they, they, they just live in the river. Like their houses are like floating house days. They do everything by boat. Pretty much the kids learn to swim first and walking. Um, so it was like a really humbling experience to go see how the drive live and then how close they are to nature. It's like they're not that uh, like us, like, oh, what time is it? I'll do this and that. I'm always on my phone. So it's like mm -hmm. their guidance depends on how the sun sets, like what animals are out, um, like, like how's the tide? Um, I, yeah, and I don't know. It's just like, it was so but crazy. Again, it's just a, a different way of life, you know, again. Definitely, 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 definitely. I was like very um amazing to experience that and like you know it's something that is in in my country so you know being able to be informed there and experience that and it's like an experience that not many venezuelans get and where, where's next for you you know after, after where's next for you so after lockdown where, where do you plan on going next yeah so um as I said, like I don't, I don't, I don't really think I'm gonna travel this year. But then in my in my near future, I see Brazil um, as a as a as a potential country to visit. Um, but then, but yeah, I don't know. In terms of maybe like I don't know, like Canada is so close that maybe you know uh, we can trip to Niagara Falls will be something that might happen <laughs> as well. <laughs> And what about you? Any plans? Uh, I'm supposed to be going away um, next month. I'm supposed mm. to be going to Gran Canaria, but I don't no see way. that happening. Um, to Gran Canaria? Yeah. Wow, that's um, awesome. Um, are you going to visit any of the other islands or just that one? So we've done, we've done the majority of them. I think that's the last one that I've not been to of the Canary oh. Islands. Um, you know, Spain Spain's quite a popular destination for us here. Um Yeah. You know, so um it's close by, good weather, um you know, cheap and cheerful for the for the drink and the food and things like that. So, <laughs> um but yeah, no, it's it's you know, it's a it's a good place to go. Um no, definitely. I think when my wee girl gets a bit older we'll start branching out a bit. Um <laughs> You know, myself and my wife. Um, my wife's more travelled than I am. She's, you know, she's been all over the world. Um, but you know, for myself, we further staff been is we done New York for our honeymoon, uh, and then we done a an onward flight to Jamaica. Oh wow! Uh, so we done a week a week in Jamaica. That was really good. Um, but yeah, we'd definitely go back there in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Oh. That that's amazing. Well, no, I wish you the best in in your future travels, and also, I mean, I'm so jealous. I wish I could go to any of the Canary Islands right now. <laughs> <laughs> Is it still so cold in Chicago? <laughs> um, right. So this kind of takes us on to you know my favorite part of of the podcast um, is story time. All right, so. I want you to take us on a journey in detail, all right, mm -hmm. about one place or, or adventure that you want to share with us uh, in as much detail as possible, you know, the things to do there, the things that you've done, you know, things to eat, recommendations, you know, places to visit, you know, just somewhere you think you must, everyone must visit at least once in their life. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll hand over to you and I'm going to go radio silent. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, um, well, since I am South American, I will talk about a country in South America. Um, I would definitely, okay. So I will definitely recommend Argentina and Argentina is, is much more than tango and meat. Um, I, I, I really, I really like their culture and, um, and like, for example, if you go to and visit Buenos Aires, which is the capital, it is so multicultural. It's like you can find people from many other countries living there that have either emigrated there or they are just on a exchange. Uh, but then also you have the, the, the Argentinians, Argentinians from the capital. 
Um, and then over there, for example, in Buenos Aires, they love soccer. It's something that is, it's not even funny. Like they love soccer so much. And I mean, I get it. They have some, they, they have had and still have some of the best soccer players in the world. So it's like over there, they either, they, they have two main teams. So they have two main teams and there's like, like people there are divided by either they like one or then the, the, the another. Um, so for example, that in the capital, you can, <clears throat> you will always get invited to a barbecue, no matter what. And they, they have barbecues free almost every day. Um, then in the city, you have different places like El Caminito, which is like a little neighborhood, super colorful with these little um, star, stores. Um, then you have, of course, you should go visit one of the uh, soccer stadiums. Then, I mean, and even though like Argentina is known for tango, it's mainly tango and the, the, the tango dancers is main, mainly an attraction for tourists. Um, and if they do, did, did you say huh? tango? Yeah. Is that where tango comes from, Argentina? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Every day is a school day. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. So, uh, so yeah. So in in Buenos Aires, I would recommend you know going to a tango show, going to El Caminito. Um, of course, trying uh, one of I mean their meats, and of and, and of course, if if you make friends with an Argentinian, they will invite you to a barbecue. Um, they are they are so friendly. Um, it's amazing, and they are very like well we south americans in general were very touchy in the sense that you know when we say hi to someone we hug them we kiss them um on the cheek um so that's also that that will be like a a good experience for you know someone from other culture and then that will be the capital but then the country has so much to offer like they have deserts in the in the north and then um they have like so many lakes in the in the center of the country and then if you go to the south which is you have Patagonia, which I mean Patagonia has been one of my favorite places to visit. It's something that is just mind blowing. Um, for example, you have in in the south you have Ushuaia, which is the which is the southernmost point in the world. So like after that after that little town, there's just Antarctica. And then even from there, you can book a trip to Antarctica. And um, I mean, and depending on how much you want to spend, um, you can, you know, go to Antarctica and swim there or stay there. Um, so, so yeah. Um, also in, Us in that little town in Ushuaia, you have the, uh, the Emerald Lake. And seriously, like their pictures are like, color, like the, the water color is Emerald. Uh, then also you have different glaciers um, and then you have the glaciers and also you can see the sea lions and the penguins like when I saw penguins I almost cried I was like oh my god a penguin so <laughs> um, so then like that's like in the bottom of the of the country then if you fly two hours north you you can find find Calafate which is like they have over there they have the largest glacier in the world which is called El, El Perito Moreno. And it's just amazing to see all those glaciers and like to see the ice breaking and how, how, it, how it falls in the water. Um, and then like, again, like there, Argentina is also known for its wine. So, you know, um, besides going to the glaciers, you can also go to a restaurant and have, enjoy a good wine and a good food. Um, also, like since they're so close to the Antarctica, their, their seafood is amazing. Um, then also, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know so many things I can say about Patagonia, but th th those two will be the, the main ones. Um, and then, I mean, I will say like, if you want to visit that country, start in the capital and then go work your way down south. Um, either I will recommend by plane because it's such a uh, it, the country is very long so it's like if it is by car uh it will take a long time and you know the money you will spend on gas wouldn't be 
after all, completely worth it. But yeah. Is, was that good? Do you want more details? I don't no, know. no, that's, that's perfect. Um, no, that's absolutely perfect. So Argentina, we've not had that one before, so that's, that's very good. Um, so this kind of takes us on to the, the next and kind of final part of the, the interview, um, unfortunately. Um, no. <laughs> but <laughs> um, So, you know, we put up a wee post on Instagram, um, you know, as you've seen, uh, just looking for some questions, um, you know, for yourself, uh, from from other travellers or from, you know, just people of fans of either, you know, my podcast or you, even your podcast. Um, so I've got one here. Okay. Uh, so I've got Teo, uh, Teo Phil 00. All right. Uh, so they're asking, uh, would you rather trade intelligence for looks or looks for intelligence? So I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you repeat so, that? Yeah, I'm mean, used one, to your one, Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the questions that they're asking um, uh-huh. is, would you rather trade intelligence for looks or oh. looks for intelligence? Okay. Uh, that's a complex question. Uh, because it depends, like, I mean, I, I always will give back looks because, I mean, First, like beauty depends on the on the on the person that is you know that is watch not watching. But like mm-hmm. like I don't know like I will give up looks, but then it's like depends what type of what type of what type of intelligence intelligence is he talking about because we have about eight intelligence. So uh, is he talking a lot about like what emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, financial intelligence? Uh, but yeah, if I can pick. All of them, I will say, of course, intelligence, because looks is something that you can always, you know, work on, I guess, if you want to. <laughs> um, yeah. And although that, well, we've only got one question through for you, all right, um, mm-hmm. we have got a couple of people that have come through and, you know, saying, so I've got one here, uh, Michelle Be- Bettina, I hope I said that right. Um, She's saying, you know, that she loves your podcast. Uh, this is to you, not to me, um, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, that she loves your podcast and you're such an inspiration. Um, you know, and there's there's a couple of new messages there. So, you know, it's obvious that your message is getting through, um, you know, and that you, know, you have got fans there of, of your, you know, yourself and your podcast, which is absolutely fantastic, you know, so... It's just up to you to keep it going and, you know, to encourage other people. Definitely. Of course, it's up to me. (laughs) No, but listen, thank you very much for for coming on the the podcast today. Um, I know it's it's very early for you, um, (laughs) where you are. So, again, I can can only say thank you. Um, Why don't you tell everyone where they can, you know, you can find you on social media, you know, we're, we're... where can people find your story? Where, you know, of course, yeah. Um, so yeah, so um, so I am mo- the the social media uh, platform that I am more most active on is Instagram, and then over there you can find me. My Instagram handle is Colmenares underscore. I'm just gonna spell that just in case. So it's like Lou. <laughs> I know my 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 last name is kind of complicated. So Lou is L-U, and then my last name is Colmenares, which is C-O-L-M-E-N-A-R-E-S, and then underscore. Like, I'll be really happy, you know, to get to meet new, make new friends over there. Like, if you're listening to this and you want to get in contact with me, you're more than welcome. And seriously, thank you so much, James, for inviting me here. And I really, I, I really like what you're doing, like offering this space um, to people to, you know, to talk about traveling and and if you're traveling, most likely that's one of your passions. So thank you so much for providing that space and you know for you know paying pretty much listening to other people's stories and sharing them. So thank you so much for that. No, thank you very much for coming on. Um, you know I do it because I want to hear the stories and you know I'm sure there's other people that want to hear the stories as well. 
So um, for me, it's more of a. Sometimes I actually need to remember that I'm I'm not listening to a podcast and that I'm actually interviewing, and I kind of get yeah. caught up and lost in, in listening to you know people speaking. Um, yeah. It's challenging sometimes because it's you know it's one of my passions. It's what I love doing. Um, you know I love hearing your stories. Um, so again, thank you very much for coming on. What I'll do is I'll take all your, your social media handles and things like that. Mm-hmm. If you send me all the links, I'll make sure they're in the comments below. Um, so anyone that's looking for Lou, uh, you'll get all her, you know, all her links below to any of your social media handles that she sends me over, uh, to her Instagram, and also to our podcast. I would recommend it. I've listened to a couple of them, um, especially about the one about Mexico. I was listening to that this morning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you it's embarrassing um, but thank you <laughs> <laughs> so yeah no i mean we, we'll look out for each other you know we've got to you know make sure that we're all checking out each other's content and you know your stuff is really good um so you know keep it up and i'll, I'll certainly be listening in the future and you never know we can maybe get you back on um, you know once we kick off the traveling and things like that again eventually um but listen, thank you very much for coming on, okay? And everyone, remember, if you just want to listen to more episodes of The Static Traveller, um, remember to subscribe. You can find me on Instagram, again, it's The Static Traveller. Um, also on Facebook, we've got The Static Traveller Facebook page and also the YouTube channel. And I think all your stuff's available on, on YouTube as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. so again, yeah, I'll, there... I'll put... Mine is available on Spotify. Perfect. Um, so you send me any of the links that you want and we'll make sure it's up there Um, but listen Lou thank you very much for coming on today it's been a pleasure speaking to yourself and you know thank you for sharing your your stories and experiences with us all Um, but until the next time you keep travelling and I'll stay static